G'day guys, welcome back to Stat Chat Sports. We're talking footy again with another one of our AFL previews. We've got, we got all of us, all four of the boys are on the chat tonight. We've got Steve, BT, Tazza and myself. Um, how are we going, fellas? It's, it's been a while, it's been a while. Four fours back, back together. First time since the very four first four. pod. Yeah, my first yep. AFL one, I'm keen. Yes, yeah, Steve, it's, it's good to have you on deck. And look, I think we need the extra reinforcements because um, we've, we've had a lot of uh, comments and feedback on YouTube on our last few videos, particularly uh, from the Adelaide fans who were a, a big fan of Taylor. Um, but we love the feedback. And <laughs> Sorry, so fellas. It's good. It's, I know, you know, it's all good. We're just here saying our opinion, having a good time talking footy. But uh, Steve, it's good to have you on board for a little bit of extra reinforcements uh, as we talk about our 12th ranked team today. Yeah, we have our beloved West Coast. Yeah. Will be probably a bit of a surprise for some people to maybe see him that low. Uh, I had us um, ranked the highest out of all four of us, I think. Um, I must yeah. admit, when I, when I did <clears throat> these rankings, I got a bit of help from a guy at work. Uh, I'm not as avid AFL supporters as the rest of you, so I struggled a little bit. So uh, my opinion might uh, hinder a little bit. But look, well, I'll, I'll do, I'll okay. do, I'll so do my got, best. We've got we've got three West Coast Eagles fans um, amongst the boys: Steve, myself, as you can see, and and BT. Um, but I think realistically, you know, we we were pretty harsh on the Eagles and. Um, I, I, yeah, it's it's a tough one because universally across the board, BT, I think most media outlets don't see them having a good year. And we kind of tend to agree. Yeah, I just can't. The injuries, the key injuries, the Jack, whole Jack Darling situation, Oscar Allen. Well, well I, don't, I don't know what the whole situation with him, where, when he's going to start. Obviously, he went down with a bit of an injury. Jamie Cripps as well. Uh, got no forward line, really. At all, Luke Shuey, he's obviously a key one as well. Some big, big name injuries. I think that's the problem. And the there's a few older guys. There was Shannon Hearns still playing, and Josh Kennedy. It's like, how are these guys going to pull up? Obviously, they're not going to play the whole season. But you wouldn't think so. But yeah, just not. I don't. I, don't, I can't see them. They're still going to win at games at home and stuff like that. But they're still going. They're going to lose games to the top teams, and uh, that's where I. Then I can't see them winning many games away. To be honest, Taylor, is that is that how you saw it as well? Obviously, not as a as an Eagles fan, but an outsider looking in. Um, you know, what what was the main reasons on your end that you see the Eagles having a bit of a slide and and having a down year? Yeah, for me, it's the the older players are just getting maybe falling over that that hump a little bit, getting where age becomes a factor. And I don't see that many younger guys apart from the likes of Oscar Allen. It, that's where it finishes there for me in terms of genuine sort of um, good talent coming through. I, I don't know where the next wave, because there's plenty of good talent in that Eagles squad that's probably coming past its prime. I don't see where that next wave is going to come through to, to help them uh, hold that spot that they've been holding for years in the top eight. Yeah, I think that's a fair call. I don't think the Eagles... Uh, have drafted super well in the last 10 years. Um, they had a really good draft the year they won the flag, um, where, they, like you said, they brought in Allen, uh, they brought in Brander, who's left now, it's gone, um, yeah. as well as Liam Ryan um, and Petrocelli, I think. <clears throat> so, but, but aside from that, yeah, not, not really a lot of, um, of young talent on board. And, and part of that is they have been selling the farm, you know, trying to get some established players to keep them at the top of the table. Um, with Tim Kelly being the obvious one there, you know, giving up a, a number of first round picks to get him on board. Um, Steve, what do you what do you make of uh, Tim Kelly this year? And it's his, it's going to be his third year with the club now. Do you think you know he's he's really in for a big year and he would have settled well, or, or do you think it's a it's a bit of a bust recruit for the Eagles? He he needs a big year. I don't like you would think three years in that's gone really quick. By the way, but. Three years in, you would think he'd settled by now, and and be really comfortable with the the guys around him. He was dominant for Geelong, 
but he hasn't he hasn't quite hit those heights at the Eagles. So I think his time will come and and this year not necessarily make or break for him, but he's definitely due for a real show off season. And with the rest of the midfielders around him, it getting on just that little bit. Uh, he probably needs to start taking control of that midfield, I reckon. Yeah, I think, I think you bang on. The problem on. with him is um, he, he can't – hopefully he improves, but that as soon as he gets that tag, he just goes missing. And with no shoey there, the team goes straight to him because the rest of the midfielders for Eagles, they're not damaging midfielders. You've got Gaffers, just runs. It's, you can let him get 60 possessions and you still could lose by 10 goals. Mm. Dom Sheed, oh, he can kick a few goals, same thing, but – the rest of, like, Elliot Yo, you can let him run free because he can't hit a target to save his life. Um, no, Yo, I think Yo will be better this year. He should he, be. He, he has to he, be. Yeah, he had 12 months out of the game and really yeah. was just coming back into it last year. So he's he's the one that will really help out that midfield. Um, but I think Shuey being out actually helps Kelly. I think Kelly's really struggled to find that role because he's a real attacking, front-running, ball-winning midfielder, and that that's been Shuey's role in the team for the past, you know, five to 10 years. So, you know, when Shuey was out last year, Kelly looked better. Obviously Shuey out, we think to start the season with soft tissue injuries. And we don't know how many games he's going to play this year, um, which is, which is obviously a bad thing for Eagles fans, but probably a good thing for Kelly's game um, and seeing that progress forward. It's just the consistency one- for him. Like, like you said, when, when Shuey's not been there, then, He's stood up, and then when Shuey's back in, and he sort of sort of goes in a bit of a shadow. But you've seen we've seen it in in patches, but just just need to see it a bit more consistently, especially from a marquee player like Kelly. Yeah, I think the big thing this year as well is going to be finding that next wave of midfielders coming through. I mean, I mean, we've all spoken about the aging list there for the Eagles. Um, Shuey, Redden, obviously, are going to be phasing out. They've probably only got a couple of years left. Um, BT, do you see any guys that you think this year might see a bit more midfield time just as we sort of move into that next phase of the Eagles midfield? I didn't mind O'Neill towards the end of the season last year. He, he, he came all right. Connor West, Edwards. It's just hard to say whether they actually get the game time or not. Because you obviously you're going to have Yo, Kelly and Redden. She rotate through there. I know she's more of a wingman, but they're still going to rotate him through there. But it's where they give these guys game time as well. They, they have to. Otherwise, if they're not, then they're just, Eagles are just going to go down and down even further, I see. Once these other guys move on. Shuey, with his, especially with his, he's only a few. If he does another big injury or so, like I would not be surprised if he ends up retiring. He's constant yeah. injuries now. Agreed. Uh, Taylor, we spoke a little bit about the forward line as well. Oscar Allen is not going to start the season. And Jack Darling, it's unknown when, if he'll get back this year with the um, with the COVID vaccination mandates. Do you, do you have any thoughts on that forward line? You know, any options are going to present mm-hmm. themselves um, to be that key forward with those guys out? Um. Bailey Williams, I'm not sure if he spent a hell of a lot of time up forward, but he is sort of touted as the, the replacement for <clears throat> for Nat Nui when he does decide to call it a day. And I wonder if he can <clears throat> form a bit of a role up in that forward line where he can pretty much uh, get his way in <clears throat> get his way into the team, sorry, and um probably find himself a little role to um to help out because I mean they're really they're really struggling. Jared Brander would have been great. Oh I yeah. Think. It's it, hard it, to it, understand it, what happened there really with that with that decision on Brander. Well I guess the Eagles didn't want to re-sign him <clears> and Brander didn't really want to didn't really want to come back either. So uh not sure what happened there. Um, but probably yeah. a good call on Williams as well because the Eagles do lack ruck depth as well. So they'll need to get some games into him and get him ready to go because that knew he's not going to play, you know, 100% of game time either in the ruck. They've got to play two rucks. The day yeah. um, Bailey Williams is number one ruck is when Eagles hit rock bottom. That, that, <laughs> that's that's what it's been. Do you not rate Williams, BT? Oh, I think he's an absolute spud. Oh, really? <laughs> absolute spud. 
Mm. Yeah, don't rate him at all. I don't mind him, oh, but wow. so you're thinking that they'll go hard for Tim English next year? Uh, yeah, within, yes, yes. I was going to say, yeah, within the next two years or so, but yeah, still be next year. I think they're going to, they have to. Yeah. They Because Nat Nui, how old is he now? What, 33? He's 30. He's 30? 30. Yeah, so, and again, he, and I think he played, but he played a fair few games last season, but obviously he gets a few knocks and whatnot. And they can't, they need a, they need to get someone in to replace him now because Ruckman take a lot more time to develop. And I just can't see yeah. Bailey Williams having that, that skill and whatnot to, he's not even going to be close to a Nat Nui type. And the, the Eagles midfielders rely a lot on Nat Nui winning those taps. And if they're going to start relying on Bailey Williams, then the, yeah. defen- the, in trouble. the, the, the defense needs to get ready for a lot of ball. Yeah, I, I do agree, um, but I, I I don't mind Williams. And the other thing the Eagles have been able to do historically is draft Ruckman and develop Ruckman. Um, you know, you look obviously at Dean Cox, Michael Gardner, you know, even Mark Seavey was a handy backup Ruckman. Um, Scotty Lysette, Callum Sinclair has come through there as well. So, um, yeah, you know, they, they do manage to develop these guys. So I, I think... Obviously, the lack of depth is concerning, but it's not it's not the be-all and end-all from my point of view. But did um, those those Ruffman back in the day, did they did they look better because of the players they had around them? Let's when you have a Chris Judd, Ben Cousins, Daniel Kerr midfield, your Ruffman's going to look that bit better. Agreed, agreed. But I also don't think that the midfield of the past ten years was lights out dynamite, as you said. No, the, the, the Ruckman has been bailing out the midfield as well. Yeah, oh, Nan Nui, definitely. Nan Nui, to show you how many times have we seen that? That's that's where I see. I just can't see. I, I, I see Eagles being out of the top eight for the next minimum three years. I can't see us making finals. Yeah, well, Steve, you were the only one of us to have the Eagles making the finals this year. Um, was there a reason on your end for optimism? What do you what do you like about the the blue and yellow in twenty twenty two? Um, I mean, do, besides the only other p- team I can think of that's really got an aging squad, sort of like the Eagles, would be Geelong. Is there anyone else that I'm missing? But besides maybe them, that would have a quite an old team. Uh, definitely the top two oldest uh, oldest lists in the competition. Richmond as well, getting up there as well. So obviously, age comes with injuries and and et cetera, et cetera. And it seems like the pace of the game at the moment is favouring the quick play. Obviously, the Eagles play a real slow marking game, and that probably comes down to maybe their players being a little bit older and just sort of not moving as quickly, but can also play in their favor, I suppose, when with the experience and stuff like that, as if they can keep those older guys fit, um, there's plenty of experience there and plenty of premiership players. So fitness is key and, 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 and keeping them on the park and injury free. There's no reason why they can't continue sort of the way that, like if they make the eight, they'll sort of scrape it, be there or just about, but like, it probably comes down to keeping those experienced players fit for me. Yeah. And I think obviously, I think we did our predictions before this latest run of injuries as well, which um, certainly isn't going to help their chances in, in 2022. Um, Steve mentioned the game plan. Taylor, do you think that there's a chance that, you know, Adam Simpson does a complete 180 and, and really looks to change that game plan and, and have a more attacking game style running out of defense? Um, I think he's going to have to with um, it really depends on whether they want to blood these rookies a bit more. I think I mean they're not going to be able to do it with the, with the aging brigade that they've got. I think if they can put guys like um, Campbell Chesser, apparently he's lined up for wing time. Um, A few more of these young guys like Luke Edwards um, in the mid uh, Connor West is a bit of a bull, but I, I think it really depends on the, on the young guys coming through. Because, I mean, you got Widow down back, who's probably, I mean, not a great user of the ball, but 
he loves to sort of get it moving a bit a bit more. Um, yeah, no, yeah, he's there I, for the long term replacement yeah. for Hearn, I guess, with yeah, yeah. the long kicking <clears throat> style as well. Um, yeah, and then they they've got a few guys that have been hanging around the the back half in Nelson and Cole, who I, I, they're role players at best, I'd say, and they haven't really sort of taken that next step. Mm-hmm. Um, Liam Duggan looks good, but he might play more midfield time. So, um, yeah. yeah, probably interesting to see how the team shakes out uh, in round one, really, as to how they're going to go about it. I just lack yeah. that speed as well. There's no speed really in the list, no, especially in the back line. You got you don't have really anyone who can break the lines running off half back. I think that's where they lack a lot. They rely on getting the ball in Hearn's hands and trying to hit that that target to get him bail out up on the wing or so a Nanui type mark or whatever, if Nanui can mark it. Um, <laughs> yeah, that, that type of play. So they're going to have to try and find something. If they start using maybe, I know Rotham's more of a break. A, like, Rotham's going to take Shepard's role, you would think. Shepard's gone. Yeah, and I like Rotham. I like Rotham, Rotham too. He, yeah. he certainly came on as an intercepting defender last year and, and played a good, pretty good role. I can see him getting a, yep. you know, a lot of game time this year. Probably Petrovsky Seaton was the guy mm-hmm. they thought you know, might be able to come in and and give them a little bit of dash off half back. But you know, he he's done an injury in the intra club match as well. I'm not sure how serious that is. Um yeah, and there's certainly some selection issues that they've got to work through there at the Eagles. He was playing up forward as well, apparently, in the intra club. Which they're gonna to have to find some goals somewhere anyway. So that yeah. I don't know, it's a hard one. Like if they say injury free, if these players, Hearn and Kennedy, play every game, Nanui play every game, then they're going to win more games. That's why. But if Nanui goes down early, if Ken, <clears throat> if Kennedy goes down in the first couple of weeks, then that's <clears throat> that's the big issue there, and that's where yeah. you can't rely on these old players to play every game. A couple yeah, of injuries and then they're screwed. I don't think anyone's questioning the Eagles' talent at all. I mean, no. it's there. It's just whether they can keep it on the park. Yeah. As mm-hmm. Stephen said before, whether they can keep the experienced guys on the park for for three three quarters of the season at least, and they can string it together. All Australian chances for the West Coast Eagles, Steve. Who have you got um, that you think is probably a pretty good chance of making the team in twenty two? Uh, I've only got two: Nick Nat and Liam Ryan. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, they were the only two that made it last season as well. Yeah, Ryan made it in 2020. Okay. Uh, he had a really good back half of that year. But Nick Natnui, um, yeah, certainly a good shout. He's been very good the past two years. Also, the champion data number one ranked AFL player. Taylor, you got any thoughts on that? You you happy with the call or you reckon um, Nick Nat a bit overrated? Uh, have you seen the champion data elite list that comes out every year? I have, and I think there's a fair oh, few okay. spuds on that list. Uh, I put no stock into that whatsoever. It's look, I reckon he's a great player. I do. I think he's a star, but he's not the number one player, not by any stretch of the imagination. Who's your Who's yeah. your number one player in the comp? Out oh, of interest. Shit. Pardon me. <laughs> um, uh, uh, on the spot. Uh, look, I'm going to say I love Sam Walsh. Yeah, okay. That's an interesting um, call. It put on the spot, just just for all things considered. And yeah, I, I Sam Walsh is right up there for me. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, BT, yeah. who you got? Uh, the reigning Norm Smith medalist, Petrarca. Fair shout. Yeah. Game yeah. winner, top player. Real, he's a bull, the Petrarca. Yeah. Um, I like that call. Steve, anyone in particular that you want to go with? Nat Five. No, that's a, that's a challenge. <laughs> no, no, that's not that's not true. No, I, I'd I'd probably agree with with Brody. I, I the truck, he's a savage. Yeah, I like Bont for me. Mm. I think I think Bont's just been doing a little bit long in the Petrarca. That's why I give him the chocolates. Mm. Um, yeah. But that being said, I think I think Nat Nui is is certainly the key to the Eagles. He is clearly their most influential player. Um. And even though he doesn't play, you know, as much game time as everybody else, you notice when he's on the field and he makes that midfield run. Uh, without him, they just, they look awful. 
because they're all front-running midfielders. You know, there's not a lot of defensive no. midfield capabilities with the Eagles. So he really papers over those cracks. Um, and, yeah, they've either got to find some midfielders who can do that role or try and get Nick Nat to hang on for a few more years. Yeah, completely agree. Saying that, McGovern's pretty important, though. <laughs> they, they, they struggle when he's not there as well. Um, again, like I've been saying this whole thing, I think if uh, McGovern's my one, I think if he's if he has a bit of an off year, I know he's obviously been all Australian a few times and one, he's a gun defender type player. But if he has that little bit of an off year and not if he's not 100% and he only plays like 70%, I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna struggle a lot there. I think they're gonna rely on him a lot for these intercepts because I think their their midfield depth. I don't. I can't see him winning. I think they're gonna lose a lot of ball, so especially to these teams like a Bulldogs, Melbourne type team. These dominant midfield teams. I I, I think these we're gonna be relying a lot on this defense and someone like McGovern has to play his lights out to get Eagles a win. The Eagles have relied on their defense for the last. Five plus years, they've exactly. been clearly the best unit. Um, Shepherd out is really going to hurt. Mm -hmm. You saw McGovern last mm -hmm. year; he was injured. He wasn't looking right, and yeah, you know, the defense did start to struggle. You know, and if they play Tom Brass forward to try and cover up the fact that they don't have a key forward line this year, it's going to be yeah, it's it's going to be really interesting for that Eagles defense that historically has really bailed out the team. I don't think yeah. McGovern's been the same for years. Pretty much, pretty, probably since he picked up that injury in the in the prelim against Melbourne in 2018. All right, he's just not quite been the same player as as he has prior to that for me. Yeah. Anyway, and like like he's had he's had his fair share of injuries since then, so he's missed a lot of game time. Probably has a part to play, but um, yeah, he's he either that or teams have just worked him out know how to keep the ball away from him and he just, just doesn't seem as damaging anymore. Yeah, I'll take that. I mean, when, when the ball comes to him, don't get me wrong, he's all over it, but, you know, the ball's got to get there and he's got to be in the positions to make those intercept marks. And I just feel like teams have just kept the ball away from him now, which is obviously the smart thing to do, but I don't know. It's just not, not the same for me. A player under the pump, Steve. We spoke a little bit about Tim Kelly earlier. Is he your man, or have you got someone else in mind as a player that's really got a, a make or break year? No, nah, Tim Kelly's not there for me. I've got I've got a couple. Both can be seen as forwards. Both Jake. Oh no, sorry, they're not both Jakes. Jake Waterman and Jack Petricelli. I think if Darling doesn't end up playing the season. Uh, or misses a handful of games because of his COVID vaccine and all that drama, then I'll be looking for someone to sort of play second fiddle with uh, Josh Kennedy. And Waterman sort of played that role before, uh, but he needs he needs a big year. And likewise, Petricelli, he's not a direct replacement for Jack Darling by any means, but he's not quite hit the strides he has patches of brilliance with his speed and stuff like that, but he doesn't have a massive impact on the game as I think he probably could. So, and I think it's one, wasn't he, wasn't his name sort of thrown around as part of the trade for Tim Kelly at one stage. So they were obviously looking, I mean, unless, unless I'm wrong, but they're obviously looking to potentially move him on. So they're obviously seeing something as well. You know, you're on the money there and um, all reports from the Eagles is that Petricelli is, uh, quote unquote training the house down um, <laughs> this preseason, which is a pretty standard, pretty standard line from most clubs. You've always got someone that's training the house down. Um, but if Petrocelli can have a good season, that's certainly going to help the Eagles' chances, particularly with Cripps. Um, he's going to be missing the first part of the season with a pec injury that he's picked up. So um, pretty good shout there from you. Um, and of course, the last uh, topic that we always like to go through with these season previews is a, a breakout player, um, someone that you think is going to really step up a notch and, and take it to a next level this year. Who have you got? Connor West, for me. I hope he gets his, okay. some, some game time. Uh, my partner, Brody, you know her. Um, she's a fan of Connor West. Um, obviously, uh, West Perth. Uh, an ex-West Perth player over in the Waffle. 
but he he dominated there and <clears throat> there was all reports that when he beca- when he was drafted by the Eagles that he looked like he'd been playing in the AFL for for years and uh the handful of games that he did play last year he seemed to play pretty well from what I saw so uh there's there's probably a good as chance of any for this season for him to get a lot more game time and feel a lot more confident in there it's a stacked midfield so he's got bags of talent around him which will help him um, look great as well, but you can I can see him having a having a pretty pretty big year. It's a good shout. I do like that, and is probably something that the, that midfield lacks is a real uh, contested ball winner inside midfielder. Um, you know, Yo gives you a little bit of that, and Redden as well. But certainly, we don't have a lot of depth coming through in that department. So, uh, yeah would be really good for Connor West to come on and have a pretty good season. Yeah, definitely. So, And, yeah, it's a bit of homegrown talent as well. So what's not to love about him, I suppose? Any last thoughts, Taylor, on the Eagles and um, how you see them going this year? Um, look, as a Port Adelaide supporter, you've you've – as a Port Adelaide supporter, we prank. don't we don't care, BT. Your thoughts? <laughs> 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 look, just kidding. Look, yeah, it's it all depends on the young guys coming through. If they can mix the the blend of um, experience with with uh, young talent or whatever there is in that list, whatever can come through. That's it for me. Yeah, it's just how they can blend this year. And BT, you you usually love a good sign off on these videos. Anything uh, anything from your end? Ah, uh, yeah, I'm going with Stephen here. I think we can cut out Taylor's segment right there. So, it's a bit, <laughs> bit, bit irrelevant. So, <laughs> yeah, fair enough. So, what we what we do want is we want to hear from the West Coast Eagles supporters. So, make sure you're commenting on this video, letting us know your thoughts. Do you agree with us? You're a little bit pessimistic about the year, or do you think this is all just? A big misunderstanding. The Eagles play well when there's no expectations on them. They're going to be in for a big year. We want to hear from you. Let us know. Subscribe. Comment. Um, we really want this to be an interactive channel. And um, I think it's, uh, yeah, it's good to have you guys on board.